each, on each of the tall buildings, there were bleachers and there were people all sitting there and they had their binoculars and going to get ready for the slip, the not slip, can he make it, will he make it? They're all excited, right? Everybody's all excited and they're cheering and he says, welcome, we're going to go ahead today and I'm going to walk across this vast divide. My little pole, my little feet, we're going to make it across. Mm -hmm. But there's a difference. Today... I'm going to walk across with somebody on my shoulder. The crowd is like, yes! It's even better than his binoculars are going to come in so Sweat's going to be pouring down. Nerves are going to be wrecked. So he looked at the crowd and he said, which one of you will volunteer? <laughs> come on! I've done this before. You know, bigger buildings than this, bigger bad divides than this. Evil Knievel has nothing on me. We're going to just go across. Silence. Uh-huh. <laughs> Silence came across. Everybody started to whisper. I don't think that's going to be me. I need to live. It's not going to be me. And that's where we are today. We're going to start and we're going to talk about the servant's heart. Amen. Over these past few weeks, a uh, pastor has asked each one of the speakers to give an ingredient. So as I was sitting, I was thinking about it. I'm like, I, you know, I can't sing. I have two daughters that can sing beautifully. But in my mind, I sound, you know, like Celine Dion. It's just not true. So um, it's really not true, correct, ladies? Yeah, right, you know. So, um, you know, I, all I could think of was Diana Ross, you know, when Laura was talking last week, you know, stop in the name of love. Because every single word I say or somebody else is saying, cut commutes into a song. Brenda Allen, you know yep, what I mean? Yep, it just yep. converts right into a song. It could be a secular song. It could be, you know, Yes, Jesus, Love, Speak, whatever. In my mind, it's always video. It's always old. So, God said to me, <coughs> Adele talked about being awake, being alert. Brad had, came in and talked about our conviction. Mm -hmm. What is inside? What are we going to hold on to and believe that is true? Mm -hmm. Brenda talked about the courage yeah. of that conviction. Mm -hmm. Are you brave? We can be brave. <clears throat> we need to have that courage. Again, that song, <laughs> uh, the kingdom book, was in my mind. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> Laura came and talked about love. Mm -hmm. Big love to encompass all of what was talked about so far. And I heard God say, go in the name of love. Yes. Instead of stop, go. Yeah. We need to go. That is good. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I yes, pray that you Lord. would open up the hearts and minds yes, of Father. the people that sit here and myself. I pray that you would change lives. God, that you would anoint the words that are said and that they will be in your purpose. <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I hope I have this correct. Let's see. Success. So we talk, the first servant's heart, of course, like every individual that's ever spoken in the entire world, they look for some kind of a meaning. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. So your basic knowledge of servant is a person who is devoted or guided by something. The next little line underneath says, one that serves others, a public servant, especially one that performs duties about the person or home of a master or a personal employer. Mm -hmm. Of course, the word master comes out to me in a different way because as a Christian, God is my master. Mm -hmm. I am here to serve him. So this is starting to make sense, right? We are put here to serve, to serve his purpose. Yes. That is his purpose, not ours. Amen. We do get in our, our way, but really we need to serve God's purpose. Yes. Not our. The, one of the examples that we see in the word of God is where Jesus washes the feet. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Of his disciples. Yeah. So Jesus is in heaven. He's God. He comes down to earth. 
He lives among us and he's washing feet of the disciples. That's pretty humble. He's God. And he's washing my feet. I don't know if any of you have been in a washing feet ceremony, but it is the most awkward thing to sit in the chair. Amen. Right? It is. You're like, what do you do? If you have a phone, like if I had my iPhone, I'd be like, okay, go ahead. <laughs> you, know, you, you don't know whether you're looking down or looking up. You're pre- you have no idea what to do because it's yep. the most humbling Humble. experience. Yep. That was for a servant. When back in back in the Jesus day, people came in the house, they ate. Mm-hmm. There was a strong odor on their feet because yep. what they do, they walked in dirt all day long and they had sandals. They didn't have, you know, all these great Nikes or whatever Tim I don't even know what they're called. Great shoes, okay? Mm-hmm. And their feet smelled. Yeah. So the lowest servant in the house had to wash the feet. Mm-hmm. Now Jesus has come in, and he takes off his outer garment, puts a towel around his waist, gets a basin, and starts washing the feet of the disciples. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because those disciples, you know, you know in that room there was major talk going on and confusion in their mind until Jesus started washing their feet of that person, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. And they started to be humble with that servant who was humble himself. Mm -hmm. I I can't imagine. God's ways are not our ways. Amen. They are totally not what we want to do half the time, some of the time, or we think we're inadequate to do them. There's a whole list of things that come through there. Jesus speaks to the crowd and he talks about the scribes and the Pharisees. They're all sitting in those positions, right? First of all, they didn't say what they, they didn't do what they said. They didn't humble themselves. My mom used to say all the time, do as I say, not as I do. (laughs) Just get it done, move along, don't worry about anything else. Nothing to see here, just do as I say. We have to deny ourselves. Then he said to them, Paul, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Huh. Cross might be heavy. I don't know about that. I don't know if I can take on all that stuff. I got a lot of stuff. The issue is we in the 21st century, is that where we are now? In the 21st century, we do not deny ourselves in many things. The only time we're denying ourselves those things is when the checkbook has gone low. Okay? And now we got to pay those bills. We don't have money for the bills, and we've already got all of our stuff. So now what do we do? Do we return the stuff to Walmart and get the money back that we needed? Do we go back to all those places? Who owes us money? What's going on? we gotta, we got to get that money back in the door. We don't deny ourselves much. Mm-hmm. That's true. Instead... I wish I could have brought a U-Haul truck in here because it would have been a lot more impressive. <laughs> but we have our stuff. Not only do we have our stuff, but we haul it around. Like this is my stuff. You see my stuff? I got lots of stuff. And we just bring it with us wherever we go. It's with us all the time. Bumping around in my little old green wagon. Right? We just got all of our stuff. We're like so happy we got stuff. It's just stuff. We don't even care what it is anymore. We're like, oh my gosh, we saw it on TV at midnight last night. Did you see that little shit tonight? Like, <laughs> Did you see the husband moving on that thing? That's so cool, cool, cool. Spending my money. Yeah. I'm going out and I'm spending my money. So I have my little wagon here with all my stuff in it. Okay. All my stuff. Pretty, right? It's pretty. I'll turn it so you can see it. Oh my goodness, you gotta look at my stuff. Okay. So, the trophy. 
Keep us busy, right? <coughs> Who can identify with bags? Pretty little bags that we keep. We're like, well, I might have to bring that to work one day with my lunch in it. <laughs> it's a pretty important store. <laughs> not only, like I said, do we not buy the stuff, then we bring it in. We're like, I bought something here, did you notice? <laughs> then, we've got all this stuff and we've been doing all these things, so we gotta relax. We need to go relax now. My time is filled with my sports, my shopping. Now I need to relax. It smells pretty good, actually. I have to relax. I need a spa day. Does any women get to testify? I need a spa day. Adele, we'll be over. That's where we're going. Oh, wait, we got more stuff. I got more shopping stuff. It's not as pretty as a bag, but it's okay. Then I spend my time. I've got I have some work. Don't look at the bag. It's really, it didn't come from one of those stores. Okay, so I have my bag, and I'm really important, and I've got to take my work all the time. Do you know I work here? I'm a worker. <laughs> so do, I'm a worker. I got lots of stuff. I really don't have time for other things because I've got my work. I just can't help you. And then, <laughs> okay, this is my favorite. I like to walk around with him. And he's got a cord, so it's great. <laughs> The power. It's got lots of stuff. Not only do we just get to watch what's on today. Remember the days when we got home from like school, like three thirty, and you watch Gilligan's Island. Uh huh. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mike Douglas. Anybody remember Michael Douglas? Yeah. Mike Douglas, the talk show guy, yeah. went into the movie at three o'clock and you watch Elvis. Oh, that was so great. I got so much time on my hands. I can do this. Well, now you got a DVR. <laughs> I'm like, I can watch Hawaii Five Ball anytime I want. It's so awesome. Midnight. Maybe when I should be sleeping, I can watch this. Okay? Does anybody have one of these boxes? Yep. Yes, yes. iPhone. iPad. The original iPod. So great. It's all about me. Yeah. I, I, I. That's it. I've never seen so many pictures of people I don't, I mean, seriously. Oh, Lord, yes. Seriously. True. I can barely, I mean, I go on Facebook once in a while, but come on, get over yourself. Yes, preach right Cindy there. Crawford, you wait. Okay. I get on dating myself, right? Who, who's popular now? They have no idea yet. They're so lying. I'm not Kim Kardashian. I'm not Kim Kardashian, right? I. It's all about I. Yeah. Go ahead, deny yourself. I can't. <laughs> oh, good. That's good. Then I got my friends. <laughs> my friends. Her hair's a little messy, but we'll take care of that at the spa day when we go. That's right. <laughs> so I got my friends. I need to go talk to my friends today. Because my life is so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> My iPhone isn't working, correct? Uh -huh. I went shopping, I didn't find anything I don't like. Yep, yep. <laughs> TV, I got 500 channels, there's just nothing to watch. <laughs> I'd like to work with my boss, it's really annoying me. <laughs> I don't want to do that either. I was going to bring Grit Ball, <laughs> if anybody watches Medea. Iron Pan. <laughs> We keep ourselves busy in the kitchen. Sometimes.
sometimes it's actually to make a meal for our family. Sometimes it's just we're keeping busy in there. Oh. We're hiding out. Uh oh. We're denying ourselves. No, we're not. Yeah. We're not denying ourselves. We got all this stuff to take up the time. Yeah. So that we don't have to deny ourselves. Ooh. Oh, I'm making dinner for my family. Oh, I'm not shopping for good things for my children. We need this, we need that. I deserve a break today, McDonald's. I deserve a break. None of us, very few of us are denying ourselves. We got too much stuff in this wagon. God couldn't put anything in here if he wanted to. How could he? What, what are you gonna take out, you dumb? What are you taking out of your wagon? Yeah. I don't like to take stuff out of my wagon because it's mine. That's right. You have to down to come up and get rid of some of that stuff. Deny right. yourself. Yes, yes. So that God can dump in something. Man. Give you some of that conviction. Use the courage. Yes. To serve. Have a servant's heart. Amen.